Hello, this is a reading from my new novel, Terry Branken Has a Gun. My name is Malachi O'Doherty. Um, the story, it's a story basically of uh, a man who is now a successful businessman, solicitor, property developer. Uh, he was in the IRA in his youth. He did things then that uh, he would not do now. And his wife has just found out about them. Uh, she's appalled. She has left him for a time to think about that. She stayed overnight in one of the houses that they rent the students in a part of Belfast called the Holy Land, which you would know about if you're if you're from Belfast. And uh, while she was in that house, it was petrol bombed. This is one of the mysteries that is uh, developed in the in the story itself. And all other houses belonging to Terry Branken were were petrol bombed and and burnt out that night. So. Um, the following morning, and this doesn't spoil very much for you because it's still early in the novel, but on the following morning, Kathleen, Terry's wife, is staying in a hotel room, trying to recover from the night before. He comes to visit her and see how she's doing, and she tells him that the local radio uh, station is going to be covering the story. So that's, that's where we are now. She said, turn on the radio. He looked puzzled. They'll be talking about us on the Toland show. She could see that he was trying to grasp the implications of this news. As he walked to the bedside and picked up the remote control, he found the station the discussion had started. This was a busy night for you in the fire and rescue service. Well, the first call out was at 3.15 to your house in Damascus Street. This is a residential property and in the area popularly known as the Holy Land. We dispatched two appliances, but by the time we arrived, there was significant scorch and smoke damage. And I think it is important to say that incidents like this illustrate the need for a working smoke alarm, which we would urge people to have in their homes and to check every week. The house had been petrol bombed, said Nevin, trying to bring the man to the point. At this stage, we have not ascertained the precise cause of the fire. Of course you have, said Nevin. It was a petrol bomb, wasn't it? Well, it is up to the police to issue an official statement, but we can say that first indications are that the fire was exacerbated by an accelerant. That makes it suspicious. I'll say it was suspicious. The poor man who owned it had four other houses burnt down last night. Tell me about the others. The largest fire was at a house in Sala Crescent. This fire was an advanced stage when we got there and there was nothing we could do but control the flames and let it burn out. The premises were totally destroyed. Fortunately, though it was a private residence, there was no one at home. Is that unusual? No, sometimes people leave electrical appliances switched on and plugs in the socket. So this is an appropriate time perhaps to remind people of the necessary precautions. Always unplug all appliances when you go to bed or leave the house. Yes, 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 of course. But you're not telling me that this was caused by the pilot light on the TV, are you? It would be premature to declare the precise cause of the fire. Really? Why is that? Because a police investigation is underway. Toland was getting exasperated. OK, well, let's just confirm the basic facts and move on. Five houses were petrol bombed last night and all belong to the solicitor Terry Branken. Isn't that right? I'm sure the police would be better able to confirm details like that when their initial investigations are complete. Our role was to bring the fires under control and report our assessments of the likely causes to the police. We have done that. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. And did you tell the police that all those houses had been firebombed? We alerted them to the fact that traces of accelerant had been found in all the houses. Thank you, Fire Officer Thomasine McCourtney. Now we have a call coming in from a young woman who lived in one of the burnt out houses. Tell us your name, love. Don't love me, Navin. I'm not one of your big fans, Jilly MacDonald. And what was your experience, Jilly? I was living in the house in Dundas Avenue that was petrol bombed last night. And you are sure that it was a petrol bomb? Of course it was a bloody petrol bomb. I saw it come through the front window at me. Well, take us through the whole thing, Jilly. I was in the front room watching Netflix at about four in the morning and I might have been dozing off but then there was a mighty smash through the bay window. Now the big curtains, 
did stop it, but there was a stink of petrol and suddenly there were flames lapping all over the place. I screamed my head off and ran out the front door. Were there others in the house at the time? There was lads upstairs. They got out the bathroom window into the yard. I'm telling you, we could all have been killed and all for that fuck. That was the last of her voice they heard. Nevin or his producer had closed the theatre. Nevin seemed a bit unsure what to say next. Well, we don't tolerate foul language on the airwaves, and we always cut it off. And I know people say that's the ordinary way that people talk in this town, but that's beside the point. The rules are the rules. Furthermore, this programme has no insights at all into the identity of the person Jilly was alluding to, nor does it support her in any allegation that might be implied intentionally or otherwise by the terms she used. Terry Reckon Tolan had just about covered himself legally against a defamation action. But the point had been made. Jilly MacDonald had blamed someone, and it would be easy for many listeners to conclude that it was him. We have another caller. Good morning. Good morning, Nevin. I used to rent a house from Terry Brank and myself, and I don't believe he would do a thing like that at all, not for any amount of insurance money. Nevin roared at him. Right! If you can't come on to this programme without swearing and slandering people, don't come on at all. And you might think you're doing someone a favour by saying they didn't do something that someone else said they did do. But if you name someone in connection with an allegation, whether to try to get them off the hook or to hang them on it even higher, let me tell you. It is still actionable because you are perpetuating the original defamation. Nevin's producers would be crapping themselves now. He spoke slowly. So listen clearly. We on this program wish to dissociate ourselves entirely from any speculation attributing those fires to any specific individual. We have no information about Terry Branken other than that he is a respected solicitor and property developer. We should point out that one of those who was nearly killed last night was his own wife. Now let's move on. Nevin altered his tone from the hectoring of his audience to the more upbeat inflections of reportage. An audit office report this morning says that the police have still not got sufficient computer power to catch speeding motorists. If you think you have been caught by a speed camera but not been summoned, phone us and tell us about it. You needn't give your name. OK, call her in line too. The man had a thick country accent. He said, I often drive down the M2 at 100 miles an hour and was never caught. And I think it's no surprise that Terry Branken would kill. Nevin slammed the theater in time to shut off the end of the sentence. I don't know what's come over you lot this morning, he said. Kathleen watched Terry getting more and more agitated. She knew what usually happened when he was like this. He acted rashly for the exultant sense of being momentarily in control. He was thumbing his mobile. Hey, Finian, who's producing Toland now? Have you got a mobile number for him? Great. Terry scribbled down the number and then dialed it. It's Terry Branken here. I think you know now that the only way to avoid an action for defamation is to give me an immediate on-air right of reply. There was a pause and then he picked up the remote and turned on the radio. That's what the voice on the other end had told him to do. Well, it might be a good morning for you, Nevin. It's far from it for me. Look, I have one thing to say. I know who attacked my houses last night and I have a message for him. I am coming. Don't you dare cut me off. Fuck! For a moment, Terry Branken seemed to consider throwing his mobile phone at the wall. So, <laughs> so that's, if you like, the comic relief uh, after the, the high action. I hope it works as comic relief after the high action of, and violence of, of the preceding chapter. And uh, it's on, in a section of my book, Terry Branken Has a Gun, which has been quite well rev reviewed and generously reviewed by, by some of the papers. And uh, it's available in bookshops when they open again, but it's available online from No Alibi's Bookshop, from Amazon for, and, and from various other shops. So please read it and enjoy it. Thank you very much. <laughs>